Regardless of the time and age, being a member of the royal family automatically puts you amongst the elites of society. Expectedly, you'll get to enjoy all the best things that life has to offer. But as the saying goes, all that glitters is not gold. Nobility has its drawbacks too, and no ruling class suffered it more than the ancient Egyptian royals. Despite their luxurious benefits, they lived an unhealthy lifestyle and endured an incredibly hectic schedule that sometimes mirrored the living conditions of slaves. Join us in today's video as we deep dive into the archives of history to explore how Egyptian royals lived their lives. Egyptian royalty worked full-time as project managers. Ancient times in Egypt were marked by amazing feats of engineering and art like giant pyramids, sculptures, and iconic tombs. All of these projects were managed on a daily basis by the Egyptian royalty. Nowadays, high-ranked politicians like presidents and governors can choose to delegate project management duties to officials below them, or better still, hire professional project managers to do the job for them. Sadly, members of the Egyptian royal family didn't have this luxury. They were actively involved in the projects at all times, and occasionally paid visits to different construction sites when time permitted. And since their presence often attracted large gatherings, pharaohs had to find the right balance between keeping their cool and hassling contractors to meet up with the deadlines at all times. Egyptian royals couldn't get a moment to themselves. Members of the Egyptian royalty lived a celebrity lifestyle and were constantly hounded by the presence of stewards, royal guards, craftsmen, money managers, and advisors from dusk till dawn. Hopefully there was no introvert in the Egyptian royal bloodline. They'd have been sick to the bone by the sheer amount of attention they got. Thankfully, nepotism was a thing back then, so pharaohs had the option of selecting their friends and close relatives to fill some of these roles. Egyptian royals were bathed and dressed by royal servants. Do you think getting dressed for work is a hard job? Well, life would have been a lot easier for you as an Egyptian royalty because you'd have had servants to bathe and dress you up every single day. But thinking about it again, this luxury would have been marred by a few disadvantages. Back then, there were no deodorants or mouthwash, so the servants got a premium view of their master's private genitals. And in return, they'll get drenched by the early morning bad breath and body odor produced by pharaohs. There were a few exceptions to this rule, like Hatshepsut, the second historically confirmed pharaoh, who perfumed herself with rich oils at all times to underline her queenship status. Dressing in Egyptian royalty was expensive. Clothes, jewelry, and other fashion accessories are some of the luxuries attached to royalty, but they were incredibly expensive and sapped a huge chunk of the royal finances. Also, the outfits were usually extravagant and uncomfortable. We imagine that one or two pharaohs would have had reservations about wearing these super heavy garments and awkward ornamentation. However, some enjoyed this luxury and held on to it even after their death. A prime example was King Tutankhamun, who was buried with over 90 pairs of luxury sandals, including one set made of gold. Egyptian royalty regalia is never complete without a wig. Wigs were perhaps the most important fashion accessory in a pharaoh's cupboard. It was a symbol of affluence and authority reserved exclusively for the ruling class. But more often than not, the hairpiece was a thorn in the scalp of ancient Egyptian royalties. Legends say that some of the wigs were so large and complex that the weight often carved bald spots into the heads of people wearing them. No wonder they say heavy is the head that wears the crown. Slaves and ordinary citizens would have been thankful they were excused from this punishment due to the law that restricted them from wearing wigs. Egyptian royals were promiscuous. Monogamy was legal among royals in ancient Egypt, with male pharaohs allowed to have multiple wives. But most of them took it to a whole new level. Usually there's a chief wife who was widely recognized across the kingdom as the king's official partner. And then there were several lesser wives, concubines, and harems. British archaeologist and writer on ancient Egypt, Charlotte Booth, once wrote that this act confirmed the wealth of an Egyptian king. So technically, the bigger the harem, the wealthier the king. Consequently, this meant they also had tons of children and large families. Ramesses II was the biggest ambassador of this act, 
as he reportedly fathered over a hundred children. Egyptian royalties endured a hectic schedule. Being a royal comes with its own responsibilities. Egyptian royalties played multiple roles, presiding over long meetings, inspecting projects, and performing spiritual rites. This meant they barely had any free time to themselves. Imagine having to settle a dispute in the morning, visiting a construction site in the neighboring town in the afternoon, and discussing the problems of your kingdom with the gods in the evening. That would have been one hell of a schedule. Even the greatest multitasker of our time was struggle to keep up with this life. Egyptian royal family members were likely to get murdered. Royalty in ancient Egypt wasn't all about luxury and enjoyment. In fact, as a member of the royal family, your life was constantly under threat from enemies within and beyond the walls of the palace. Some pharaohs had a blissful rule, but some others, like Ramesses III, paid the ultimate price for letting their guard down. Having successfully defended his country in three great wars, Ramesses III was a fierce and accomplished warrior and leader. These achievements were ridiculed when he was as Sinatra in the harem conspiracy orchestrated by his secondary wife and her eldest son, Pantoer. His death triggered a massive succession crisis that hastened the dynasty that existed in ancient Egypt. But apparently, his predecessors didn't take note of the circumstances that led to his death. Sekrenenrataro, the ruler of the last local kingdoms of the Egyptian region of Teban, was brutally murdered with history suggesting that he was either murdered in his sleep or sabotaged on the battlefield by his own men. Egyptian royalties suffered from underlying health conditions. Leisure was an everyday lifestyle for members of the Egyptian royal family. They wore the best clothes, ate the best foods, and were carried around in sedan chairs. Not to mention that they had a flock of gorgeous women at their service. This privileged lifestyle was enjoyable but it led to some serious health problems for royals. Such was the case of Hatshepsut, the female pharaoh who governed Egypt in the 15th century BC. As a result of her unhealthy diet, Hatshepsut suffered from obesity and diabetes. Historical reports suggest that her health problems lingered on through her reign as she had arthritis and a genetic skin issue that caused itching. Unfortunately for her, the cream that was supposed to cure her skin issues reportedly contained cancer-causing tar, and she eventually died of bone cancer. Apart from their unhealthy diets, Egyptian royals practiced inbreeding as a way of keeping the throne within the family. This sometimes resulted in terrible genetic and physical disorders, such as those seen in King Tutankhamun. Egyptian royalties listened to the complaints of citizens every morning. Access to high-ranked politicians is increasingly becoming limited in our world, with cabinet meetings and public media sessions now scheduled to hold at rare intervals. But that wasn't the case for members of the royal family in ancient Egypt. They started their mornings listening to complaints from different areas of the kingdom. Of course, it's not an easy task, especially on days when they wake up on the wrong side of the bed. But they simply didn't have a choice. Wild entertainment. Usually, Egyptian royalties are always busy, every second of the day. But when they're able to buy some free time, they often indulge in different entertainment activities. But certainly not our kind of 21st century entertainment. In ancient Egypt, members of the royal family would occasionally abandon the comfort of the palace, and head into the bush to hunt down wild animals. Most of them had an unsurprising preference for gunning down lions, because as king of the jungle, it is a symbol of royalty and authority. That's a weird form of entertainment if you ask us, but they probably couldn't complain given the endless amount of comfort and luxury they enjoyed. For many royals who participated in this act, it was a way to show their strength. But some weaklings among the royal family often found a way to cheat the system, by employing skilled hunters to pre-hunt the wild animals for them. Egyptian royals were some of the most privileged people of ancient times, but as we've learned in this video, their revered social status was sometimes a disguise for the unhealthy lifestyle they lived.